Hey, what's going on everybody? Shinmoke here, and today we're here with another album uh, collection update. I completely forgot what I was doing for a second there. That was awkward. But anyways, uh, I think you guys get the gist by now. A bunch of music that I've uh, recently gotten and will share with you guys. So, let's just get into it. So here's the troublemaker here. Cosmos, Shell Drake's uh, The Much Much How How and I. Um, so what happened with this, this was actually why this um, update came a little later. So you can tell, not the most amount of music here. Um, but this is why it took so long to get this next update out, because uh, this took over a month and a half to get here. Um, I, I mean, it was easy to find, but um, I mean, I guess they just had issues in, uh, in shipping and stuff. And I don't know, just got tied up and it just took forever, essentially. But, you know, this is a this is a really, really fun little album. Of course, it has a nautical theme, as you can probably tell. Um, you know, it's not like a super deep or anything like that album. Of course, that's uh, that's abnormal for me, right? But uh you know, it's a very, very fun, unique, uh, lush, and uh, layered album. Um, and, you know, it's not really something you're going to go go to and um, come away thinking oh, that was just an absolute masterpiece. Um, even though you could, you, the argu argument could be made that it is a masterpiece, um, you're mostly going to be taking away the fact that it's just a lot of fun. It's a very fun and unique album. And, uh, you know, if you're if you're looking for something a little more fun and lighthearted, then this, is, this would be a great album to go for. <clears throat> Next up, Flying Lotus with uh, Cosmogramma, one of the most um, ambitious and... What is that? Oh, it has a little dent in it. That's unfortunate. But um, one of the most ambitious and unique and inspiring um, instrumental albums in history. I mean, this thing is just fantastic. It's, um, it's It really works as either... you can. The thing is, this is an extremely ambitious uh, album through and through. But, you know, you can put it on in the background and still enjoy it, you know. This is some of the more ambitious albums, um, more ambitious music as a whole, I should say. Um, sometimes you can't really put it on in the background because it just doesn't have uh, the same sort of effect. But the thing is, you can either sit there digging into every facet of the album, or you can just have it on in the background, and it's still an extremely enjoyable album through and through. Um, super inspiring to all the aspiring uh you know producers out there um yeah it's it's a it's, it was an instant classic the moment it dropped i think everyone knew that this was this was something special <clears throat> something special j Della donuts uh, another instrumental based um album here of course from j Dill, the producer um i think it, this came out either right before or right after he he unfortunately passed away and this was his um his magnum opus, you could say. Uh, it's got some of his his funkiest, freshest, uh, most complex, but also some of his most accessible beats. And it's um, it really has that that sound of the um, I would say the early 2010s and um, mid 2000s. It has that sort of uh, hip hop feel to it. So it's just if you're looking to vibe to that sort of music, this is just excellent. Um, and I, I, as I was listening to it, I started hearing all this instrumentation and, you know, just realizing just how many uh, artists, not just hip hop artists, but artists in general had um, sampled his work and did, taken inspiration from his work. And you know, I was thinking like Kendrick Lamar and MF Doom took a lot um, from this album and, and Jay Dilla in general. Um, and it was just it was just an experience, honestly. Uh, it's it's kind of surreal, you know, because he knew uh, Jay Dilla knew his untimely end was 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 coming when when he was producing this and you know you got the uh, siren in the background what's that supposed to mean it happens in almost every song and it starts ramping up as the album goes on what did he mean by that is that just a uh, an allegory for like him knowing his uh, his time was coming or or whatever or did he just think it was a cool sound to to put as a theme of the album but anyways J Dill donuts you you guys probably already know it. it's a fantastic little little instrumental album are they still instrumental albums? I actually don't know for sure. Uh, next up, Buckethead Acoustic Shards. This thing's a little busted up, unfortunately. That happens with jewel cases like this. Um, so a little, bit, a little bit of a smaller release from Buckethead. It was just something I found was enjoyable and uh, found for cheap. A lot of Buckethead's bigger albums now are starting to get more expensive. So I do want to get a few of them in the future. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, like Enter the Chicken is like 40 or 50 bucks. So it's like... Ouch. I wanted to get more Buckethead stuff, but might have to do some uh, deal hunting instead to get uh, 
to get a to get a good copy, and not one uh, not one like this. <laughs> um, but Acoustic Shards, uh, another instrumental album for Buckethead, the um, guitarist madman, like the absolute favorite guitarist. I mean, there's just no way I would like anyone else more than him. Um, and it's a mostly. Yeah, I don't think there's a single electric guitar in here. It's, it's all acoustic and it's all just mind blowing. And of course, Humi, one of the best, uh, one of the best guitar solos ever. So now we're gonna get into a uh, little section here. Four whole albums. Oh, I wonder. Oh, what was that? Bam. LCD sound system. American Dream. Their self-titled Sound of Silver. And of course, this is happening. So, recently got into LCD Sound System. I started with This Is Happening, which was a, um, I guess was a mistake. I think a lot of people got into them to this album because it's, it's probably their most accessible and most, like, ear candy e, right? Um, but yeah, in my opinion, this was definitely their best. Um, so, starting with their best and then going from there. Or, you know, I think This Is Happening definitely has a different sound. Uh, I do think... Sound of Silver and their self-titled have a certain sound. And then American Dream and This Is Happening have similar sounds. Um, so you could say This Is Happening has has a very unique sound compared to... Because this was, of course, after a seven-year break. Um, so This Is Happening has a has a different sound than the other albums, really. Um, so it was kind of, um, kind of weird, honestly, going from This Is Happening to... Um, then I listened to Sound of Silver, then their self-titled... And then American Dream. So it was it was a little weird um, being like, wow, okay. I mean, it's diversity, right? That That's great for a band to have. But it was, it was like, well, I did kind of comfort that this is happening. Uh, this is happening now. But they're still a fantastic band. It's extremely unique, um, funny, has a really interesting outlook on things. And, of course, the production is... Uh, it's it, it sounds like something you've heard before, but it's a little funkier and a little more unique, you know. And I think that was that was really cool, especially on a on their um, self-titled. It's it's a lot of punk type sounds, but it just sounds so fresh still, you know. It, you would think this would be dated by now, but it, honestly, to me, it still felt fresh. Um, Sound of Silver was might might be my least favorite. Um, just some songs that I didn't really think were were all that great, and I didn't love the self-titled track either. Um, Self-titled track is that is that the technical term? Yeah, the technical terms escaping me right now. But yeah, I didn't really love the uh, sonic qualities of the Sound of Silver. Um, and then of course this is happening. Just love it. Um, Dance yourself clean is uh, quickly becoming one of my favorite songs of all time. Easily, uh, I think the pacing of the album is probably their best as well. Um, it, it feels more like a holistic piece than their other albums, and um, you know, tying in Dance Yourself Clean to, um, it's called What You Need on this album, but I, I could see on YouTube it's called Home, the the final song of this album. Tying those two together just makes it feel like a whole package, right? And of course, I Can Change. Unreal song. Just I, th I think everyone under the sun, um, once they hear that song, they're like, that was a good song, you know? Not everyone has to love it, but I think everyone can agree, that is a good song right there. And, of course, it still has the LCD sound system silliness and funniness. Um, and, of course, uniqueness as well. You could say this was um, probably their least ambitious, um, you know, not least ambitious. I guess le least weird, and that's probably what got me into it and got me listening to their other albums. Um, so just touch on American Dream real quick. Um, of course, after a seven-year break, they came back and came out with this. Uh, you know, these, these three albums here, they kind of sound like, um, trying to work through unhappiness and, and try and, try and keep yourself happy through, um, you know, just, uh, you know, what, through this is happening, one of the biggest things was, uh, just live, letting music live through you and just trying to live, live in the moment and, uh, enjoy yourself, basically, even if you're not exactly a happy person. And a lot of that goes through all three of these albums. And then American Dream kind of, it's more of like a jaded tone. And I, I understand that that was something people really did not like. That This is a little more straight up depressing and a little bit more, um, God, ah, just don't give a shit, totally jaded type of, uh, type of tone on this album. And, and yeah, I, I understand how that rubbed people the wrong way, but I think this, this is a good way to cap this off so far. I mean, who knows if they plan on making another album. I hope so, because I still really enjoyed American Dream. Um, 
but yeah, this was just super. This is a super depressing uh, album. Thinking about it, especially the ending, which is a tribute to the ending song. Black screen is a tribute to um, David Bowie, which is it's just. I can't listen to that and not, you know, get emotional, right? So that about wraps up this album roundup. Um, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like these albums, hate these albums? Uh, and if you give them a listen, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.